Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of 7 Minute Scaling Secrets, where we interview entrepreneurs and learn a secret on how they scaled up their businesses. Today, we have a special guest, Dr. Amiya, who started Neurobit. This is a business that actually prevents a lot of diseases that we see in society today, and he does it in a very special way. Dr. Amiya, uh, tell us a bit more about what you and Neurobit are doing. This episode was brought to you by Superscaling. Join the Superscaling Ignite program today and learn how you can systemize and superscale your business so that your revenues can grow to at least $100,000 a month with a productive team from all over the world, raving fans as clients and happy founders who have true freedom. Visit superscaling.com slash ignite today. And now back to the episode. Thanks, thanks, Alvin. Thanks for having me. Uh, so uh, what Neurobit does is uh, Neurobit is pioneering this idea of using sleep as a biomarker to actually predict and prevent diseases. Uh, so what is uh, really interesting is that sleep is not merely uh, 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 something that, that, that just happens. It is actually strongly connected to, to your health, to your mental well-being. Uh, in fact, uh, Many of our learning, our memory consolidation, our emotional mem- consolidation, um, our physical health, our immunity is actually strongly connected to sleep. And what we do at the company is essentially find out small uh, patterns within your sleep and your vitals to actually figure out when specific diseases are going to happen. And our focus right now is on uh, stroke, heart failure, and dementia, three major uh, reasons of death of early preventable death. Uh, in fact, what is shocking is uh, one in every four death is can be prevented. And we are moving towards a world where that, that becomes a reality and we don't have to go through these unnecessary deaths. Uh, so you're saying that these three major illnesses and diseases, they, they can be actually prevented if we knew about them just from sleep alone, just from our sleep patterns and what's happening when we sleep. How is that done? Yes, yes. How effective is this uh, in the reduction of like all these diseases and illnesses happening? So uh, I'll, I'll give you some uh, specific examples. So uh, there has been research that has seen that even a single hour uh, increase in your sleep can reduce incidence of heart failure by 25%. That's wow. how strong the connections are. Uh, of course, there are other markers like blood markers and saliva markers, but sleep is actually much easier to uh, measure, especially with the proliferation of wearables and durable technologies, right? So uh, you can imagine a future where you don't even have to wear a device. You just go sleep in your bed and there are sensors within your mattress that can measure your heartbeat, your, your respiration and can figure out your sleep patterns. And from that, tell something is going wrong. You have to act on it. And, right. and that's the future that we are building at Neurobit. So, so what Neurobit does is not just encourage you know longer sleep, but actually identify problems with the sleep that we are having, right? Whether it's not optimal, whether we are, I don't know, maybe tossing and turning or having any issues. Mm-hmm. Like sleeping. Is that what Neurobit is doing? Yes, we, we actually capture a lot of different things, including how you are tossing and turning, how your heart rate is fluctuating across the night, how your respiration is changing. Uh, are you waking up in the middle of the night multiple times, which wow. you may not even be aware? Yeah. Uh, and use these patterns and then correlate with almost a trillion health data points that we have in our databases to actually figure out what is going on with your with your life and what can you do to actually improve or change uh, your, your, your future health. And more, more uh, importantly, we are working to develop something called a software as a medical device. So it's it's not just going to be like a consumer, de- consumer device or consumer software. It's actually going to be a medical system that, that integrates into existing healthcare products and actually provide uh, diagnostic and uh, augmentative uh, information for the doctors to act on. Right. Uh, so I'll give you even specific examples. So for example, within stroke, uh, those who have already had a stroke and survived, which is one third of the people, if you don't really take care of the sleep, the chances of a reincidence are almost like two times higher. So the, this is something that doctors already know, but unfortunately right now, measuring those vitals, measuring those sleep signals are not that trivial. 
Wow. So, the, so the shifts are slowly happening, but we want to play a major role in that shift. Nice. This, this is definitely deep tech, right? There's a lot of research Absolutely. involved. There's a lot Absolutely. of development work. Uh, how do you get into this field? Like, can anybody just like do this if if like they are really passionate about maybe sleep or health? How does how how does somebody actually get into a field like this? So we, we of course are a very deep tech company. We we it, it took us years to actually develop those AI models that can do this. And specifically, I, I have been studying sleep for a very long time. I have a PhD in, in this particular area and have done a postdoc in again in the same area. Uh, I have been working in areas that would sound like science fiction. Like we we used to uh produce sound patterns in specific ways that can actually increase the depth of your sleep. And that could increase your memory in a measurable way. So we, we have published these kind of res results. But uh, so uh, for building, I guess, deep tech companies like this, of course, you need the deep tech foundation as well. It's it's very different from, let's say, a software company. Uh, but absolutely, I agree that uh, if you are passionate about something, you certainly can uh, change the world uh, if you pursue it long enough and, and, and have the grit and the perseverance to take it through. Nice. Uh, do you have any co-founders in this business? Yes, yes, yes. So my co-founder is Kishan and I met him like four and a half years back. Uh, he also, again, comes from a deep tech background. Uh, he was studying a PhD in, in, in uh, cold matter, uh, uh, cold matter, condensed matter physics, I guess. Right. And he was very much interested in uh, uh, medical devices and human 2.0. So there was a natural match between us and we, we basically started the company four years back and uh, have been made, we have made some incredible advances. So uh, for example, we are now able to measure sleep at a clinical grade accuracy at a cost that is thousand times less than the wow. current clinical standard without compromising in terms of accuracy or reliability. And in fact, uh, most of our clinical trials has happened in Singapore. And we have gotten some excellent results already. Man, I love this. I mean, this boils back down to why people start businesses. And it's all about solving pain points and problems in the market. Absolutely. And the problem that you've identified, I've seen that happen with my friends who have sleep disorders and they go through like so much pain and effort just to get diagnosed. Like sleep trials, I think you mentioned, sleep yeah. trials are not a trivial thing, right? You actually got to go yeah. to a, a clinic, a place and get monitored and it's expensive um, and it's not your comfortable bed at home and it's, it's very yeah. uh, jarring. So uh, definitely, I definitely resonate with what you're saying. And again, this is something that all businesses should be all about, right? What is the problem that you're solving? So uh, Dr. Mir, like, you mentioned that you have a co-founder. It seems like both of you come from a scientific background, a background where both of you are very involved in the technology aspect of things. Uh, how do you run a business? Because mm -hmm. running a business does require like, you know, the entrepreneurial uh, skill set, the, the business Absolutely. skill set. How do you guys develop that? Mm -hmm. I think it's it's basically, uh, um, it's my opinion that founders need to be a little bit of generalist. And you have to have the attitude to learn new things and push yourself outside the comfort zone. Uh, so, of course, uh, coming from very strong uh, technical backgrounds, it's always initially pretty tough to like convey your message, uh, run a, a software team, for example. Uh, but we we learned over the time. Like uh, we 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 started small and we slowly uh, uh, pushed it through and learned the art of managing a big team managing multiple companies, one in Singapore, one in US, one in India. Uh, we, we, we learned through perseverance. That, that's what I would say. And uh, I think that that's an attitude that is absolutely necessary when you are starting something because um, you can't know everything and you need to learn a lot of things to run a company and run a business. So of course we have our own expertise, but we are not afraid to go outside our comfort zone and learn new things. Yeah, and as we as we learn, also we also figure out how to hire the right person to actually who who has the expertise to run that small narrow area, right? So oh, I I think it's it's over time that we learned all these skills. I agree. Um, I started my business when I was seventeen years old, and no seventeen years 
uh, no 17 year old person knows how to start a business or run a business. There's, there's literally no experience yet. And the best way yeah. to find out is really to start, right? You make mistakes for sure, but yeah. I think mistakes are part of the learning journey and that is the best way to learn. Uh, don't make catastrophic mistakes and I think it'll be fine. Yeah. I just have to progress yeah. that way, figure things out. Uh, and I think that's that's the that's kind of like the scientific or the engineering method as well. Like, yeah, yeah. you're not going to figure out the solution to a problem the, the first day. You just got to find out yeah. the ways that it doesn't work and then slowly progress your way to a, a proper solution. Uh, absolutely, absolutely love that. Yeah. Um, so how big is the Neurobit team right now? So uh, we, we have offices in New York, uh, Bangalore and Singapore. Uh, at Singapore, we are focused on running clinical trials and research and development. So the team is pretty lean here. We are just two people here in Singapore. Uh, we have a team of 15 people in, in Bangalore in India and a team of four people in, in the US. And we are expanding pretty quickly at this moment. Nice. So we are look, looking for extremely talented people who, who have the courage to move out of their comfort zone and build something massive. <laughs> that's awesome you have a team that basically spans across multiple time zones how do you yeah. get everybody to collaborate and be productive together are there any uh, yeah, yeah. learnings that you've got from that uh, we are actually pretty flexible uh, what we did is we we kind of divided the team in smaller groups and each group is kind of self-sustaining and uh, of course we have to talk across the groups and we find out time. And yeah. ironically, being a sleep company, we lose a lot of sleep <laughs> because uh, uh, you can't like have San Francisco, New York, Singapore and India at one time zone. Yeah. But sometimes uh, some of have, uh, us have to compromise a little bit. But uh, that's how we are running it right now. We are extremely flexible. Uh, we give autonomy to each group. Uh, and they know what they are doing, what problem they are solving, and and we get, encourage them to come up with ideas and figure out how to solve it on their own little pockets. And then we discuss every one week or two weeks as to what is happening across the team. Wow, awesome! I love that. I think that's the future of work, uh, the future Absolutely. of business to have like a global team. Uh, and I'm curious, what is your tech stack? What kind of mm -hmm. tool <laughs> communication? Is okay, so Slack, uh, of the, course that. ML part is uh, running on Python TensorFlow. All right. Uh, on the on the uh, backend side, it's mostly Python, Django, uh, and we are uh, fully utilizing all the cloud infrastructure that is built by the giants, so that we don't have to spend too much time doing the DevOps part. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, communication happens on Slack, and most of the documentation happens on Notion. Nice. I, I personally use Notion as well. Absolutely love it. It's such a flexible yeah. tool. So if anybody is yes. looking for a, not just a note taking, but a collaborative team tool for uh, that can also handle project management. Uh, yeah. Notion's excellent for that. Uh, yeah, cool. Uh, two things that we always ask every guest, Dr. Mia. The first yes. is, what is the most important habit that you think uh, makes a successful entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I mentioned this already, but uh, I think the two things which are absolutely essential for success, which may not guarantee success, but I think are essential is number one, going out of your comfort zone. And number two is grit and perseverance. And you have to build habits to build this, these things. Uh, I, what I'm really afraid of with the new generation is that TikTok, the Instagram reels, they are going the opposite direction where there is instant gratification. You do something, you instantly get the likes, you get, instantly get the dopamine hits. But life doesn't work. It, it's the exact opposite, right? You may have to work years before you actually see something. So I think those habits need to be built. And you have to be a little aware to push yourself outside the comfort zone, take some risks. Uh, because if you are always comfortable, you can't really achieve anything new, right? If you want yeah. to build something new, you have to go outside the comfort zone. You have to be accepting to fail, right? Uh, and I think those two are the major habits that needs to be formed for any entrepreneur or anyone who wants to do something new, I think. Love it. Uh, I personally feel that one of the things that everyone should do, especially in the pursuit of growth, uh, is to be uncomfortable, to leave that comfort zone. Yeah. Uh, and that's how you develop grit. That's how you develop like determination, perseverance, and, and how you actually get growth. Because 
Yeah. Uh, that dopamine thing is, is so real. Like life is not yes. life is a game, but it's not a game like a, a, a you know yeah. RPG or mobile game. It doesn't happen where you just do something and you immediately get yeah. results or rewards the next moment. It does take time. Um yeah. this is coming from years of experience as well. I've seen my business take 17 years to build up and it's a long journey. And that's the thing that yes. we have to be committed to com- be committed to the process. Uh, to actually, you know, see not not want to see results the next day, but to actually uh be patient enough to let the results compound so that you can get that kind of success that you want. Absolutely. Awesome. And the second question that we always ask uh everyone on the every episode guest is, what advice would you give another business owner? Hmm. Uh, I think, uh, of course, I'm running a deep tech company and as a deep tech company is probably very different from a SaaS or any other kind of companies. So what I would ask or what I will tell uh, someone who is going to start a deep tech company, probably they are an engineer or a doctor or a PhD or something. Uh, what I have seen in these kind of uh, founders is that they they are too much tied to the technology, too much tied to how they solve the problem rather than the problem itself right uh, so i th- i think the first thing i would say is don't uh don't have a, a problem have a technology in search of a solution or a problem rather you go out and figure out what the problem is first yeah. um, and then i think the second thing would be to communicate uh in a way that others can understand to to tell the story right uh because being someone who's extremely technical you always get stuck with the technical details, which is irrelevant for most people. What you really want to say is how that technology can actually solve a problem. Uh, And that communication is sometimes missing because as scientists and uh, as researchers, we are trained to communicate in a different way, which is kind of doesn't help you in in many, (laughs) many ways. So I I think those two things I would say one has to be a little bit careful about. and. I, I think after that, it's it's outside the comfort zone and great and perseverance that would take you to success. I love that. Uh, it sounds like you've gone through quite a bit of personal experience. And I, again, I resonate because this is what I went through as well. I, I had to figure out all these things because while you might be good at engineering, which is my background, it doesn't translate into like human interaction yeah. and communication. Yes, And, and you have realized that we are talking about psychology here. We're talking about, you know, expressing yourself and being understood. Uh, these are all things that you have to figure out. And uh, as an entrepreneur, I guess the, the word generalist, as you mentioned, is absolutely apt for this. You can't just be good at one thing. You've got to actually yeah. uh, be adept at multiple areas and so that you are multiple, multifaceted and you're able to handle a lot of things. Um, absolutely love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Dr. Mia, how can somebody who's interested to find out about you or Neurobit connect with you? So, of course, you can go to neurobit.com. Uh, and if, if you're someone who's looking for uh, building something massive, just communicate with us. And of course, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm quite active there. Uh, so those are the two primary uh, modes you can communicate with, with us. Awesome. I'll leave the links in the comment, uh, in the caption down below as well, so that people can follow that. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for listening in to another exciting episode of 7 Minute Scaling Secrets. Please like, comment, and share this episode if you like this, and we'll bring on more uh, exciting guests as well in the future, uh, so that you can actually learn more scaling secrets from other entrepreneurs. Thank you, everybody, and I'll see you on the next episode.